Morning, Mr. Rambo's hat. Your coffee. Why isn't the coffee in the cup? Uh, the canteen are supplying instant in the packet. Look, I'll show you. There you are. Now that is the magic powder. Are you ready to drink it now? Well, I will be in the fullness of time. I'm sorry, sir, that's not good enough. You have to be ready to drink it at once. Well, why is that? Well, it's instant coffee. So cold because there is only one instance when it tastes like coffee. <laughs> And go! <laughs> go on, drink it all up, go on, go on. All up, drink it all up, son. Oh, that's a lovely, sir, go on. That's it, that's it. Go on, right now. See, see? Right, now, today is Friday, which is payday, so can I have the money to take down for the staff? Ah, now, there's been a change in the payout arrangements. The money will be brought down by the accounts clerk in a security dispenser. Well, I don't like the sound of that. I've been doling out the wages in a wire basket for years. Yes, but, Mr. Harmon, times are changing, and the insurance company insists that we use a more modern method. Does that mean I've been made redundant? Indeed not. You will accompany the clerk as security escort. Yeah, but if I don't take the money, I mean I'm being downgraded. I shall have to report this to my accredited shop steward. What happens to be me? <laughs> <laughs> well, pity about that. There was to have been a bonus of two pounds that went with the job. Uh, I'm sorry, sir, I can't stay. I've got to go down to the accounts. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your custom, madam. So, anyway, me and Mrs Axelby didn't fancy going abroad this year. I mean, Spain's getting so common. Anybody can go now. So, anyway, we booked into this holiday camp. Weren't you bothered by them young men campers? No, not at all. And it was so hot that we sat in our night dresses with the door wide open. <laughs> and nobody bothered us. <laughs> well, it sounds a bit boring to me. Oh, no, not at all. There was something going on all the time. Oh, and laugh. On Wednesday night, they had this sort of variety concert. And there was this man that hypnotised people. Was he any good? Well, he got me up on the stage and apparently had me doing all sorts of silly things. <laughs> Look, that was taken of me. Blimey, you're standing on your head. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't seen that picture. Well, it's lucky your seams were straight. <laughs> <laughs> and that's one of me when he had me doing the cam cam. And that's just after, at the first aid post. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and all the way through the show, whenever he snapped his fingers, all the audience blew a raspberry. <laughs> Mrs Slogan. How you been, sir? That's the gentleman I want to see. <laughs> ah, that's our Mr. Humphreys. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Humphreys. This gentleman would like to speak to you. He asked for you personally. <laughs> what can I do for you, sir? I'm going to show you something. It's going to shock. <laughs> you. Yes, I'll put my glasses on. <laughs> Are you ready? Ready as I shall ever be. <laughs> what exactly am I supposed to be looking at? Oh, this sweater. When I bought it, it came down to there. Now look where it's gone to. Did you wash it yourself? Yes, yes. As a matter of fact, I did. And you assured me it was drip dry. Are you the drip that dried it? <laughs> Lucas. Did you wash it in lukewarm water, sir? Yes. Did you use a mild detergent? Yes. Did you use soft water? Yes. Did you hang it up to dry? Yes. <laughs> You've obviously not read the label. This garment is made of pure giraffe wool. <laughs> what difference does that make? Well, it's exactly the same principle as the cows, isn't it, Mr Lucas? Oh, identical, Mr Humphreys. I mean, when it's going to rain, cows lie down. 
So what? Well, it's just the same with the giraffe. I mean, if they stood up and got their skins wet, it would all hang over in folds. And <laughs> when they galloped off, they'd trip over. Now, what I suggest you do is wash it again, lie it on a towel to dry in some sunlight, not before two o'clock in the afternoon, preferably with a, a cool westerly breeze blowing. If you have any trouble, don't hesitate to bring it back. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. What a salesman you are, Mr. Humphreys. Uh, a silver tongue, a golden smile, a warm heart. Uh, you should have a great career with the right person behind you. <laughs> Man changing places with me. <laughs> Gather round, everybody. Come on, come on. Now, uh, as you may have heard, this is the new uh, security wage dispenser. Uh, would you uh, perhaps like to explain, Mr. Patel? Uh, certainly, Captain Peacock. Now, you all have identity photographs on your records. These photographs have been copied and are inside here. This machine will scan you, compare you with the identity photograph, and if you are, in fact, who you claim to be, your salary will be duly deposited in the payout tray. Why did it come in a white basket like it always done? Did, Miss Bronze. Well, like it always did, Dan. <laughs> because of the alarming increase in daylight robbery. Well, our wages are daylight robbery. That will do, Mr. Lucas. <laughs> now, who is to go first? I will go first. Thank you, Captain Peacock. Captain Peacock is going first. Stand by, Mr. Harmon. Are you ready, Captain Peacock? Ready. Ready, Mr. Patel? Absolutely ready. I am pressing the buttons. Now. Uh, please, to be quite still. <laughs> <laughs> the comparing is now going on. Perhaps wondering why the machine has not paid out. Mm, I was wondering why the machine has not paid out. <laughs> Perhaps it's been stolen by a Dalek. <laughs> I will now look at the identity photograph to see if there is a reason. Ah, there we have it. You see, in the photograph you are wearing fancy dress. I am not in fancy dress. That photograph was taken for the Grace Brothers uh, Operatic Society's much acclaimed production of the Pirates of Penzance. I played the part of Frederick. <laughs> well, uh, that's all right now. If you just wear a black patch and something red on your head, you will get immediately your salary. It may surprise you to know that I do not have my pirate costume with me. Oh, here. You can use this for an eye patch. <laughs> here, shove that in your mince pie. And put these on your head as a red handkerchief. <laughs> Do you think that every time I get my salary, I'm going to parade with a brassiere in my eye and a pair of knickers on my head? You've got another thing coming. Now, look, do you want your money or not? <laughs> what have you got there, Mr. Goldberg? Oh, it's a little, uh... Business I run on the side. I can't live on the money they pay you here. Uh, so I run a little agency. What sort of an agency? Uh, it's a first class employment agency. I find uh, positions for high class salesmen like yourself. Uh, Seems to pay off very well. I do it very cheap though. I only charge, I only charge the first week's wages. Yeah. Uh, 130 pounds. Who's that from? Uh, it's from the new head of stationery and greetings cards at Lallian Willits. And it's only a young man like yourself. What do you knock up here? I beg your pardon. <laughs> well, what do you earn? Uh, 
What a liberty. Mm. Do you know what I could get you at Harrods? Oh. <laughs> Tell me. Not just for selling things. People who haven't got what you've got are getting it. Are they? Why aren't you getting it? Because I haven't got what you've got. <laughs> I don't really like to ask, but what is it I've got that nobody else has? You've got charm, vitality and personality and experience and youth. Oh, that, yes. Oh, yes, I've got that. <laughs> well, some of it. <laughs> now listen, don't misunderstand me. Mm. I'm not just touting for business. I'm not that sort of person at all. No, of course not. Would you like me to make some inquiries on your behalf? <laughs> As my old choir master used to say, there's no harm in asking. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. <laughs> when did your choir master say that? Shortly after he told me that I'd got charm, vitality, personality, experience and youth. <laughs> well, I'm sure you won't mind uh, if we make our association, as it were, uh, on an official basis. <laughs> Any time you like. Well, uh, if you don't mind, would you uh, sign? There. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and there. <laughs> Here. <laughs> Here. <laughs> Here. <laughs> and uh, initial there. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, lastly, just there. Finally, that's it. That's it. Now that covers everything. Don't I get a copy? No. When you signed there, you agreed not to have a copy of the agreement. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, if you've any queries, just ask. Oh, Mr. Goldberg, could I have a private word with you about um, that matter that we was discussing? You may speak freely in front of Mr. Humphreys. I've just undertaken his representation. Anything happening? Well, I'll tell you, we got feelers out at Dorothy Perkins for Head of Ladies Foundations. And also a very good response for the position of head fitter at ATCO. ATCO? <laughs> they make lawnmowers. Are they in underwear as well? No, they make lawnmowers. But the money's very good. Oh, I don't think I could do a mechanical job. One has one's standards, you know. It's 200 pounds a week. Motor mowers or push along. <laughs> Chocolate bitty, Mr. Goldberg. Oh, thank you, Miss Brown. Now, is there any news? I've sent out all your photos with a description of your experience to date. And the only reply so far is a firm offer in bits. <laughs> 300 pounds a week. I turned it down. What for? Well, the bits was in Cairo and you was on sailor return. <laughs> Is Mr. Goldberg looking after your interests, Mr. Lucas? Oh, yeah, I'm having your job when you've gone. <laughs> I should have thought a young man like you would have set your sights on something higher. Oh, I have. When I tell him who's nicking all the staff from Grace Brothers, I'll have Mr. Goldberg's job as well. <laughs> More hot coffee, Mr. Goldberg? Oh, thank you, Diana. Right up to the chip. Thanks to you, I start as the head tosser at the Gay Who Star Pancake House on Monday. <laughs> you never told me that was going. Oh, and there's a phone call for you. Oh, thank you. Don't get up. Amanda's bringing it to you, sir. Thank you, thank it's you. It's the personnel department of Lally and Willits. Oh, thank and, you, Dan. Uh, thank you for getting me this job. Yeah, <laughs> all right. You're a busy little bee, aren't you? <laughs> Hello. McVitie's Employment Agency here. <laughs> Mr. Goldberg speaking. Oh, hello, Sid. Now, uh, have you got anything about Mrs. Slocum? Oh, you like the sound of Mrs. Slocum so far? Good. Oh, I like the sound of Mrs. Slocum. It's the sight of Mrs. Slocum that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> now, I tell you, I tell you, Sid, she's a very beautiful lady. <laughs> Her age? Well, uh, Thirty-ish. <laughs> Look, it's a senior position, Mrs. Slocum. 
They want someone older than that. Well, tell a lie and say 40-ish. What? Oh, they want someone who's 50-ish. Well, go on, now's your chance to tell the truth. <laughs> oh, look, I, I wouldn't lie to you, Sid. Uh, she'd pass for 50. What's her what like? Uh, big. <laughs> In fact, uh, very big indeed. Miss Goldberg, what are you talking about? A personality, Mrs. Locum. <laughs> oh, she will not take less than 125. I'm sorry. So, the ball's in your court. Oh, Sid, I've just taken on a new client, a Mr. Humphreys. Yeah, I'm very excited about him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sid is right up your street. Mm, he has charm. Vitality, personality, experience he's got. And youth. <laughs> and youth, then. Uh, is he what? <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, well, uh, I don't think so. I mean, uh, he's, uh, Mr. Humphreys. You're not a militant trade unionist, are you? Not with suede shoes, I'd be laughed off the platform. <laughs> no, that's all right. Well, if anything comes up, let me know. Thank you. So, I've sown the seed. All we have to do now is wait. <clears throat> Hello, it's time we were getting back. Oh, that's a nice watch, Mr. Goldberg. Yeah, 18 carat. It was given to me by a very satisfied client. Mm -hmm. Always got an inscription on it. <laughs> Thanks for everything. I couldn't have done it without you. Love, Maggie. Here's your letters, Mr. Grace. Thank you. Uh, I haven't got my glasses. Oh. Oh, well, shall I guide you around then? Yes, you're, you're very good at that, aren't you? <laughs> G R A Yes, yes, C you don't have to spell it. <laughs> well, new spectacles have arrived from the optician, Mr. Grace. I thought you might like to see if they're okay. Oh, yeah. Here we are. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, they're a great improvement. <laughs> and these are your new reading glasses. There. Here's the mirror. <laughs> We're not having an earthquake or anything, are we? <laughs> no, sir. Oh, I don't like those. They make me look like an old poof. <laughs> no, they don't. They make you look like Elton John. That's no comfort. <laughs> Attention, Mr. Grace. I want to see how much you can read. Eh? The rest's in Polish. <laughs> Sydney Blenetko. <laughs> Do concentrate, Mr. Grace. Now, what does it say on the bottom? <laughs> Washed by hand in red water. Shall we come back later, sir? No, no, no. Come on, come in. Uh, uh, can, we, can we have a word uh, privately, sir? Oh, no, I've had a good look at that. <laughs> well, no, it's like this, sir. During the past week, Captain Peacock has become aware that a certain member of staff has been making certain phone calls to a certain store about certain other members of staff, as a result of which we are fairly certain that certain members of the staff may soon be leaving us. Mr. Grace. <laughs> Mr. Grace? He's gone to sleep. I'm not surprised. <laughs> Mr. Grace? Mr. Grace? Oh, what do we do now? Well, when he drops off like that, he's gone for an hour. Oh, I'll do it for you, sir. Oh, drat, my suspender's gone again. What was that? <laughs> so, uh, we, uh, 
We fear that Mr. Humphreys has been suborned by Mr. Goldberg. Well, he's been asking for it, hasn't he? <laughs> what do you want us to do about it? Well, uh, you deal with it, Rambold. The, uh, the ball seems to have lodged itself firmly in your court, Mr. Rambold. Yes. Bit of a facer, isn't it? It's one of the penalties of being an executive, sir. Yes. What would you do in my position? Well, I'd consider it from Mr. Grace's uh, standpoint. He has three courses open to him. Sack them, wait for them to resign, or pay them more money. Oh, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> now, there is uh, one alternative you haven't thought of, Peacock. Yes, sir. If I hold my horses and do nothing, it may all blow over. If I may say so, sir. It takes an executive of your calibre to think of a solution like that. <laughs> Thank you, Peacock. Oh, excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> it's fixed. What's happened? <laughs> Ladies, where? Well. Could I speak to Mrs. Slocum, please? Who's calling? McVitty Agency here. Oh, here. Your agent's on the blower. Thank you, Miss Brahms. Mrs. Slocum. It's fixed. It's fixed me new job. <laughs> what is it? Would you come to my office immediately, please? Of course, Mr. Goldberg. Yes. Now, do you mind telling me what's going on? Because I can't stand secrets, can I, Mr. Lucas? No, you can't, Mr. Humphreys. That's why you didn't become a Freemason, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> One of the reasons. I'll put you both in the picture. You're both going to Lally and Willits. Oh, isn't that exciting? <laughs> yeah. And you, Mr. Humphreys, are to be the new manager of the unisex clothing department. Oh, well, that should confuse you, Mr. Humphreys. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. Locum. <laughs> and you, Mrs. Slocum, are to take charge of the pussy shampoo parlour. <laughs> I'll be in seventh heaven. It could be the highlight of your career, Mrs. Slocum. Head moggy washer. <laughs> <laughs> and your salary will be... No. What about mine? A month? No, a week. <gasps> and we better resign. The better the day, the better the deed. <laughs> no, 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 hold it, hold it. You're forgetting the severance pay. <laughs> If you resign now, it'll be trivial. No, you've got to make them sack you. Then we can take them to the Industrial Tribunal for wrongful dismissal. Then we make a settlement. We? Oui. Clause 10. Uh, Mrs. Slocum, Miss Brown, will you please return to your counter? Can't you see that Mrs. Maxwell is there and she's the wife of one of our directors? So she is. Well, I promise you, she will get the service she deserves. <laughs> if you want the sack, all you've got to do is be rude to Captain Peacock. What a good idea. Mr. Humphreys, tidy that counter. <laughs> <laughs> There's just one thing I want you to know, Captain Peacock. And what is that, Mr. Humphreys? I'm just going to tidy my counter. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Were you requiring assistance, madam? Oh, yes. I've just brought that skirt back. When you get it in daylight, the colour is absolutely foul. It's far too expensive, and it rides up when I sit down. <laughs> well, the colour goes with your blotchy complexion. <laughs> <laughs> and it's too expensive because you're a mean old bag. <laughs> And it rides up when you sit down because you've got a great big fat bump. Do you mean to say, Mrs. Slocum, that you don't deny any of these words? Not one syllable. She said it all, and that's the truth. Thank you, Miss Brahms. Extraordinary. Well, we will now pass on to Mr. Humphreys. According to Captain Peacock, you serve the, the Honourable Lavinia Effingham Fuchs, with two small Fs, who, who is also one of our most important customers. That's right, Mr. Rambo. Yes. Well, I will now ask Captain Peacock to repeat the remarks he overheard you make to her. On approaching the customer, Mr. Humphreys was heard to say, Hello, Dolly Baby, 
You've got the best pair of boobs I've seen since the professions of Swedish of Manuel's window cleaner. Did you say those words? I did, Mr. Rambo. I heard him. Everything Captain Peacock says is true. And he winked as well. I do. Like that. <laughs> Mr. Humphreys, I'm surprised you even saw such a film. I was under therapy at the time. Yes. Um, he then said, how about meeting me in the park behind the bandstand and we'll pitch a little woo? Pitch a little woo? But what film did that come from? Gold Diggers of 1938. <laughs> this is the most extraordinary set of circumstances. Are you going to sack us? In your case, Mrs. Slocum, I have a letter here from Mrs. Maxwell, who, as you probably know, is a leading member of Morning Glory, a religious sect that requires of its followers absolute honesty. You apparently are the first truly honest person she's ever met, as a result of which she sent you these two tickets for their next meeting. <laughs> You've got to sack me. I mean, you can't have people walking about saying the things I said. What do you mean? I've been doing it for years. <laughs> would be rather difficult, Mr. Humphreys, in view of this note from the lady in question. Tell Humphreys, 5.30 behind the bandstand and I'll take all the woo he can pitch. <laughs> oh, well, I'm sorry, Sid. The Grace Brothers here got wind of your offer. With the result, they gave new contract for Mrs. Slocum and Mr. Humphreys. Yeah. Well, I got a bit of a rocket from the management here for being behind it all. But uh, I had a chat with them and made them see sense. Oh, by the way, uh, have you got anything for an ex-army captain and a chief executive with big ears? <laughs> <laughs> well, let me know. Yeah, thank you. Well, did you sign the contract? Not only that, we've got our new wage packets. 50% rise. Good. I'll have those. What do you mean? Well, that was the arrangement, according to the contract. The first week's wages I get. There you are. It's on page four. Uh, there it is, PJ. It says in the contract. I'll deal with that. What? <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing? You can't do that. Sewers. <laughs> Look at that. That's typical, isn't it? Yes. You try and do a good deal for them and they swindle you, don't they, Mr Goldberg? They do, Mr Lucas. Shall we go to have a drink to celebrate before we go home? Oh, I'd love to, Mrs Slocum, but I've got to rush off. <laughs> I've got an appointment at half past five. <laughs> Behind the bandstand. <laughs> Mrs Slocum, I don't pitch my woo in public. <laughs> 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 